The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All right, Tony, you there? Hey guys, Happy it's weekend. funny. Sunita has has two different intros here. I never realized there's one with Tony and one without Tony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For a while, we you were just in the news segment and you weren't there, and but you were just it's like the news. You are synonymous with news in Monero, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. What's going on, man? How you doing? Good, good. Um, it's good to see Seth uh, on on Monero Topia again. Um, I was kind of thinking how I always wanted to meet him, and then I got a chance to talk to him a little bit at Monero Topia. Uh, in Miami, so that was nice because he was like literally sitting next to me, so we got to talk a little bit, which was nice. But um, a lot of good, a lot of interesting stuff for this week on the news. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Take it away. I see you're, you're back from uh, Sicily. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Yeah. We're back. We got delayed, which is very nice. <laughs> nice, yeah. A volcano. Did you, yeah, the volcano literally yeah. exploded. It was it was significant. So how many days um, were you there for? We were just after. Oh, in total, and oh uh, well, after we we get it was like an extra four days. No, that's but nice. In total, total, we were there. Um, yeah, like well over two weeks, like two weeks and four days. So it was it was a nice trip. It was nice. Oh, no. oh wow, nice. That part of the world is just so nice, man. You know, you travel. Yeah, I'm right. sure Romania is beautiful too. You know, it's yeah. just good food, healthy air, good you know, clean water. Yeah. Good environment. Freaking, yeah, the Mediterranean is just uh I don't know. It, it it just feels so healthy when when you go and live there. It's like the perfect environment for a human being, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, and like the, the food is so good. Like you can eat a pizza yeah. or pasta and gelato, and then you yeah. can run, you can like it feels so good after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you have you probably had gelato? For sure. Oh my god, so much gelato. Yeah. What was your favorite flavor? Actually, my, my favorite whenever I go back is uh pistachio. Pistachio that was really good, yeah. Well, the Sicilian Sicilians are known for the pistachios, so there's yeah. like they're they're grown right there on that on the volcano. So the pistachio ice cream there is, or gelato is freaking off the hook. Oh, that's so good. Oh and god. uh Kinder Bueno. I'm not sure if you tried that one. <laughs> that one is really good too. Which one? Uh Kinder Bueno. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! My daughter tried that one. Oh really? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my god, that. you got me flashing back to say it was nice, man. Just it was oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. You know, I was proposing. I threw it on this show. Uh, obviously, I'm always thinking about Monerotopia. I went to this one site in Terramina. Terramina is this beautiful city on the coast mm -hmm. of Sicily, and they have an ancient Greek theater there, and it's well preserved. And they do concerts there, and it's like overlooking the sea. It's like in the mountain. Wow. Um, and I, I inquired about renting it for Monerotopia. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it would, it would have to make sense for other reasons, right? We don't want to, we want to do it in a location that people can easily uh, <laughs> get to. I mean, you yeah. can, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. There's a main, there's a main airport, but obviously I would, I'd want to do for like, I'd want to see adoption there. If I'm yeah. going to go do it there, the likely next spot would be for, it would be Argentina, I would say for mm. next, the next Monerotopia okay um but yeah yeah it really would be awesome it's just uh the plane ticket will be most expensive for people unless they're from europe then that'll be quite good for them accommodation yeah. wouldn't be too much but you can beat mexico like you can you, like you said you can find a place for 30 bucks a night so that's kind of hard to beat yeah mexico is is good for getting everybody there but then yeah. like the other factor is let's do it in places where Monero is kind of naturally gaining adoption, right? So those are the two things I'm, I'm always weighing. But I did have this this group of Italians that reached out to me, I, uh, coincidentally, while I was there in Italy, that's kind of this like this Liberty opt out group. They're not Monero people, not yet, but they've just cool. kind of discovered Monero and they want to collaborate so who knows maybe maybe, oh. maybe this is our avenue to growing monero in, in italy we'll yeah see. talking to them soon okay, that's, that's um, I'm, I'm babbling on tony take away the news otherwise we'll never get to viewers on stage here yes uh, i just want to take one second and go to monerotopy.com since we talked about the conference for quite a little bit and if you haven't bought your tickets go ahead and go to buy ticket and if you put in uh, my code which i'll give it to you in a second 
Uh, but I recommend VIP tickets just because you get the dinner and a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, but, you know, choose whatever ticket you would prefer. Add to cart. And then... We don't have your thing up here. You're, you're going without screen. Oh, oh, okay. Isn't that on? I think it should be up. No, oh, there we go. Okay. Hold up. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so uh, monerotopia.com, and uh, you can buy the VIP tickets or the regular one. I recommend the VIP ticket because then you get the dinner and you get to talk to the guests more. Um, I mean, you do regardless, but, you know, the dinner is just nice and other stuff. Then if you put in code Tony24, then you're going to get a nice discount off your ticket. So make sure you use it, and hopefully we'll see you there. Now, let's get into our new section. We have quite a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Um, first... It's kind of political, and I'll play the videos first, since I always have kind of issues with that. Um, so we'll get into more political stuff and then more into Monero. Uh, this one is saying that if you own a house, subtract what you paid for it from the Zillow estimate. Be prepared to pay 25% of what of that in a check to the IRS. That's your unrealized capital gains tax um, owed under the Kamala Harris proposal. So essentially, uh, Kamala Harris proposes that um, you're going to be taxed on the unrealized capital gains. So real estate, um, commodities, equities, like whatever you have at the end of the year, if you didn't sell, you're still going to get taxed. So that, that's that's quite insane. And um, also what's interesting is that they're saying that they plan to do so many things, but they can do it now. Why wait until then anyway? Um, and they also said that they don't want to uncover the agenda only after they get elected and stuff like that. Um, we talked about price gouging a little bit last last time. Um, yeah, but not not good stuff. But then what was interesting is that Kennedy and Trump kind of partnered together, which I didn't expect since um, Robert F. Kennedy is a Democrat, as we all know. Uh, but so we're going to play two videos on that, but actually we'll play it now. So the first is going to be this one. It's very interesting. So they talk about how um, under them together, like they, they want to fix the corrupt health agencies. They want to get all the bad stuff from the food um, and all those stuff. So it'll be quite interesting. Now, let me go ahead and stop sharing this. And then I'm going to share that screen specifically. One yeah, yeah we start, start from the beginning. We didn't hear it. Yeah. Okay. One second. I oh, usually just add it as by itself. Okay. Something to add it as I do it. These agencies, the FDA, USDA, and CDC, all of them are controlled by giant for profit corporations. 75% of the FDA's funding doesn't come from taxpayer, it comes from pharma. And pharma executives and consultants and lobbyists cycle in and out of these agencies with President Trump's backing. I'm going to change that. We're going to staff these agencies with honest scientists and doctors who are free from industry funding. We're going to make sure the decisions of consumers, doctors, and patients are informed by unbiased science. A sick child is the best thing for the pharmaceutical industry. When American children or adults get sick with a chronic condition, they're put on medication for their entire life. Imagine what will happen when Medicare starts paying for Ozempic, which costs $1,500 a month, and it's being recommended for children as young as six, all for a condition obesity that is completely preventable and barely even existed 100 years ago. And then we're going to play one more video, and then we're going to discuss. Okay. So let's play this video too, and then we're going to go over it a little bit. Um... Okay. Don't you want healthy children? And, and don't you want the chemicals out of our food? And don't you want the regulatory agencies to be free from corporate corruption? And that's what President Trump told me that he wanted. He, don't you? Yeah, so that was kind of unexpected for them to come together. And um, if that is true, and that they are they are gonna do what they said, then that'll be that'll be amazing. Um, 
but yeah, so Camelo definitely isn't happy about this. Um, yeah. So what's what's interesting about this whole thing? I don't know if you um, looked into it, Tony, but it was it was in that thread too. That basically what the strategy of what's going on here, right? So he's he's aligning with with Trump, and he's pledging to remove himself from the ballot on battleground states. So basically, saying he's going to help Trump as much as he can, but he's not sacrificing um the option to gain enough votes in these non-battleground states which are basically throwaway states anyway states that trump would never win in and he wouldn't get the electoral votes in so they're they're not going to hurt him in any way he would continue to compete in those states and if he gets enough vote if he gets five percent of the vote uh it would basically allow um allow pave a way for the creation of a, a third political party oh wow that able to you know that would be uh basically on the on the level of begin to be on the level of popularity of the, you know the, the obviously the main the main two two parties right there's never been a way to have a, a breakthrough third party obviously we have the libertarian party but so this this would be an, it, it's an interesting strategy um and uh you know i always liked rfk jr I was kind of, kind of quite bullish on him when he first came came out. Um, for everything I, I hear him say, he does seem to really have principles that really align with Monero, the the ideals of what you know digital cash is all about. So I'm excited about him for for those reasons. Um, and uh, ultimately, I think this is a good move for Liberty teaming up teaming up with Trump, whether or not you agree with any of these people, if you just want to hope that the ball moves in one direction or the other, um, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Obviously we could, we could have the contrarian view. Like we're talking about body. Maybe it's better to just root for tyranny instead. And then these tools of Liberty will develop even faster. The dark forest will, will develop even faster if we bring upon tyranny and, you know, in the mainstream, but I don't know. I don't know if that's if that's the best route to root for. I'm not sure if that's the best route because once you're in the system, it's really hard to get out. Especially like communism before, we didn't have, you know, like internet and you know computers like we have them today, and all the possibilities of tracking people. Um, so it was, you know, it wasn't as difficult as the upcoming communism that 1984 style that we could see. So. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I was, I was thinking about it. What if, you know, it would be good if she came became president and her party and then things will go really, really bad and people would wake up faster. But what if they put us in such a system that people, that it's going to just be hard to get out of, like in China or, and then eventually they're just going to brainwash us so much that, yeah, so I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult, but um, yeah, it's kind of, also one more thing. So it's kind of funny. Um, as I was driving back home this morning, um, usually there's some people on, on the right side of the street and they have uh, Trump signs or whatever. And usually people are honking and, you know, they're screaming and they're happy, whatever. This time they're only Camilla, um people, not, not as many as Trump. Uh, and nobody was honking. Lots of cars. Nobody was honking. Nothing. Um, so if they win this year again, it's going to be really, really um, suspect. I don't know. But... Um, we'll see. But I mean, it's important to talk about politics, by the way, since it's related to, to Monero and the future and everything. So, you know, we don't want to make this too political, but you kind of have to kind of go hand in hand. Um, also, I wanted to bring this up since um, you, you were just in Italy. Um, but uh, you can now be your own ATM with Monero in Italy. So Tommy from Olaric posted on the Monero subreddit um that their flagship zero kyc xmr to cash service has expanded um it's currently in the usa uk europe middle east um you're we're seeing Italy. growth in, see, we're seeing organic growth in italy man i'm yeah. telling you that's awesome uh so we have milano naples rome and palermo so no sicily yet <laughs> but um hopefully soon so that's that's awesome um next up we have the ccs proposal for continued development on xmr bitcoin atomic swaps um it's open for funding so if you can go ahead and uh, contribute money it's really really important um this is to mature 
the atomic swaps ecosystem, XMR to Bitcoin, just in case in the future it's going to be really, really hard to get Monero, but they will allow Bitcoin because it's not really a threat. Um, it's important to have these atomic swaps, right? Because you can take your Bitcoin and just swap it um, for Monero securely. So um, whatever amount you have, go ahead and contribute. It's a really important project. Okay. Um, now let's talk about, this was posted by uh, Chila on uh, Twitter. So she said, so the article says, uh, Bitcoin stolen in 238 million breach fails to get privacy shield returned to original address. Uh, essentially, the stolen Bitcoin was moved across Torchain, KuCoin, ChangeNow, Railgun, and the Avalanche Bridge. 4,064 Bitcoin was divided into smaller chunks in an attempt to make it difficult to trace the funds back to the original source. However, when the hackers attempted to use a Railgun to shield the funds, the stolen Bitcoin did not meet the criteria for privacy within Railgun, so it was unshielded and just sent back. <laughs> um, which which is um, which is awful. So it's just another reason to use Monero. You don't have to worry about all this stuff, and you can just send, receive, and it's just private. So that's a beautiful thing about it. It's really easy. Like if you can probably teach your grandma for sure how to use it. If she can just send and receive, uh, then she's she's gonna be protected. Um, yeah. Then moving on. States are beginning to adopt digital driver's licenses. Biden may supercharge, <laughs> of course, the transition. Now, all this stuff becoming digital, like money and digital IDs, they sound good. Because personally, I don't want to carry stuff around. Like, I forget my ID or whatever. It will be nice to have it in my phone, but not the way they want it. So essentially what this article says, and I, I believe it for sure, um, you're going to have, the, they're laying the groundwork for a wider acceptance of digital identifications. So you're going to have your driver license on your smartphone, but now when you go online, you're going to need to be verified with your license. So you can't access any more websites that mandate that you need to be 18 or plus, whatever that, that might be. Um, or you can, just a lot of, lot of bad things, a lot of, um, restrictions. Um, so this is probably going to be implemented eventually, but it's absolutely horrible if um, if it's going the way the way we all think is that it's going to go. So how soon are they going to come? Probably soon. Um, but also Apple, Google and government agencies like the Transportation Security Administration and state level regulators who issue driver licenses are all trying to build systems that will allow Americans to carry identity documents on their smartphones. Um, and frictional, frictionlessly submit them to both government and private sector websites for verification with the tap of a button. So essentially it's gonna be really, really easy to, uh, to just verify yourself. And then you're gonna be at the mercy of whatever you can or cannot do on the internet based on your age or whatever they think you can access or not. So who knows? I mean, maybe, you know, you got to put in your little uh, light driver license and then you go to monerotopia.com. <laughs> That's going to be blocked. I uh, just can't access that anymore. Um, yeah, some dark stuff coming. And you probably won't be able to use open source software. Uh, so good luck using something like Graphene in that case. Yeah, that's going to be a big that's going to be a big issue because I don't think uh, those kinds of systems are going to work very well with open source software. Because why would they? And it's all in the direction of trying to make it more, um, how should I say, um, to protect the user and to make it easier for the end user, the citizen. But in the end, it's just going to become a 1984 um, situation. Uh, moving on. So this is really exciting. Uh, Monero posted on Twitter, we're excited to share that a pull request has been made for the full chain membership proofs integration into Monero. The pull request is a work in progress and will be improved upon and reviewed to ensure soundness of the implementation. So then you can go ahead and go ahead and GitHub and look at um, more, more details. But yeah, it's really exciting stuff. 
moving on. So somebody listed a car on XMR Bazaar. Bigger items are starting to be listed on XMR Bazaar, and it's uh, getting uh, quite a bit of traction. Uh, Dogs wrote on Twitter, or X, sorry. Um, perfect Monero ride, 1996, pre-spy tech. If you were stick, I'd consider it just for the story. Who's going to grab it? So you can buy a 1996 BMW for 16.57 Monero. And that's in Lake City, Florida. So if you're in Florida and you're looking to buy a BMW with uh, Monero, go to Xmar Bazaar and, and uh, purchase it. <laughs> so. I want I want a motorcycle. I want a cafe style, cafe racer style motorcycle, oh, or nice. or the one that we were looking at earlier, like that kind of like, kind of like a dirt bike, uh, city bike. Are they in sell? Are they all put it up, people? What's that? Somebody put them up on a smart bazaar, like a motorcycle. Uh there is. There's somebody put, but oh, it was in is. Chile. It was in Chile. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, Oh, that's awesome. I, I was proposing I'd, I'd have to buy it and ride it back up to New York. <laughs> that's yeah. It would be oh, amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Motorcycle Diaries. Oh, Go yeah. ahead. Um, privacy OG on YouTube. Australia already using digital driver license. Yep. Um, some countries already. Then, you know, we have China with WeChat and all kinds of stuff. So I guess if you want a glimpse into the future, just look into look at China, Australia, UK, and then you'll see what's what's gonna come to America eventually. Uh, anti darknet. So essentially, we have this group called the Anti Darknet that recently claimed responsibility for the spam attack on the Monero network. Uh, so they wrote, we are anti-darknet, a collective dedicated to disrupt darknet operators and their websites, drug uh, trades, um, illegal hacking, fraud, CP. Um, they said, so their philosophy is, which is important, uh, we believe darknet websites, group or communities are a positive thing. However, we don't agree on these websites spreading CP, human or animal abuse, facilitating heavy drug sales or other subhuman activities. Uh, darkness is a way for people to express themselves and cultivate new ideas in an anonymous way. Our belief is it should be done so without breaking the law or instances where the law needs changing without human suffering. So, um, and that's why they so they conducted attacks. Um, oh, and then they said black marble attack. We did find the name black marble unfitting. However, we have accepted it and we will refer it as such throughout the post press release. Um, so. The attack was done in a very simplistic way and without much scripting. So um, that, that's interesting that they actually came forward. Um, and I guess they didn't want to attack Monero directly. They wanted to attack the dark net markets. And uh, Monero was what's being used on it. Uh, but uh, we have uh, Dog on X. And, uh, it, was, he, it was great uh, research. And they, they basically spent funds on improving Monero by, by forcing additional development. Uh, exactly. it was, it was yeah, because that's, that that's that whole thing where um, the block size wasn't increasing very quickly. And yeah. so uh, transactions were taking a long time. And then after that happened, they're like, oh, shoot, we need to fix this. And so they fixed the block size thingy. Yeah, so um, if you guys are seeing this and you want to hop live on the show anonymously, if you wish. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. I tried to reach out to them. Would love to have you, have them on the show and talk to them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's okay. get them down to Monerotopia. <laughs> get them on a panel. Tell us why Monero should be shut down. We can provide anonymous masks, whatever you want, just if you're coming. <laughs> yeah, that'll be awesome. Uh, then the last two things that we have are um, videos. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then share it again. Okay. Okay, so let's watch this one. Russell Brand uh, says that privacy is under threat and that Bitcoin has the potential to be exploited by governments and become a device for control, surveillance, and censorship. So let's go ahead and watch this. It's almost two minutes. It's interesting that 
really edward snowden was a person that told us that privacy itself was under threat that privacy would become a commodity and underneath privacy the emotional idea of shame which is a kind of ubiquitous and at least humanly universal phenomena and the idea that shame can be exploited to control people is oddly primal given that what we're ostensibly discussing is advanced technology cryptocurrencies ethereal means of transaction that's sometimes difficult to even comprehend unless you understand that world and yet as is often the case it will come down to something extraordinarily human like the feelings of deep shame or a need for privacy or a need to exclude or control or set aside information it uh, reminds me of the idea that for a long time uh did we lose it oh no what happened sound did we lose tony or did we just lose the video oh it's not playing why isn't that playing it was well, playing and then it the was sound playing stopped. and then it just stopped the oh, sound like stopped a couple, couple seconds seconds ago or yeah yeah constitutes yeah. shame or fear you've got nothing to it uh, reminds me of the idea that yeah. for a long time people said if you've got nothing to hide you've got nothing to fear well who can say that these days when there are continually shifting parameters when it comes to what constitutes shame or fear so if edward snowden's concerned about it it's presumably something that we should all pay attention to and bitcoin which is being presented and understood and I suppose in an ideal situation is an opportunity to transact outside of institutions of control and hopefully corruption. Even Bitcoin, Edward Snowden warns, has the potential. Oh, sound died again. Shit. At the point, at the part, most important part. <laughs> oh, it happened again? I'm really not sure why it's doing that. Yep. Go back. I want to hear. I want to hear. I haven't heard this clip yet, so I, I got to hear this. Institutions of control and hopefully corruption. Even Bitcoin, Edward Snowden warns, has the potential to become uh, yet another device for control, manipulation, yes. surveillance, yes. and I suppose ultimately censorship. Let's get him on the show. Somebody said go in mainstream. Get it. Get him using uh, XMR chat to get <laughs> his super chats. Oh, oh my yeah. god. He's he's so intelligent. This guy, I love the way he expresses uh, points. Right, he, he like the way he describes things. He does, he's an excellent communicator. Was that the whole clip? Yeah, that was the whole clip. Uh, we have me goal six 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 on YouTube saying that I told many times that we should ha invite him to Monero talk. I mean, yeah, obviously he's cool. invited. We got to get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so <laughs> yeah, anybody that wants to try to get him, get him on. Go for it. Reach out to him. Yeah. Uh, then we have last uh, last video. This one is from uh, Copa Monero. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is cool. Bien, estamos con Freddy Ayala. Él es fotógrafo profesional. Trabaja en Copa Monero. Fotógrafo oficial de Copa Monero. Y queríamos preguntarle a Freddy cómo se siente, cuál es su experiencia trabajando hasta esta fecha 3 de Copa Monero y para lo que queda al final, que queda ya unos partidos, semifinales y la final. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Eh, como decía acá el amigo, eh, soy Freddy, fotógrafo de la Copa Monero y estamos muy contentos, muy cómodos trabajando y la verdad que es muy lindo eh, este evento y, y nada, más que nada, es muy cómodo, trabajando muy cómodo y sobre todo eh, con la moneda que es criptomoneda que estamos eh, haciendo una inversión muy, muy buena y, y demás obviamente acá le cambiamos el peso y, y nos sirve un montón ¿Cómo, se, ¿Cómo te sentiste con los primeros pagos que has recibido en cripto y luego lo has cambiado eh, por pesos? Para mí es increíble, la experiencia es increíble porque para esta zona es algo que el, el, el cambio fue muy bueno y, y la verdad que ayudó un montón y así que estoy muy cómodo como se lo había dicho así que ojalá que, que siga esto para más